Formal visual fields are a powerful diagnostic tool to assess the panorama of achromatic vision. Part one of this series showed you how they are performed. In this video, you will learn how to interpret the data produced by formal visual field testing, also called perimetry. You are looking at a display of visual field static thresholds obtained by testing a patient on the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer, the instrument in most common use in the world today. The patient's head was placed in a white bowl perimeter with an appropriate lens correction for viewing at one-third meter. The patient was instructed to maintain fixation on a central area and to press a buzzer when he or she detected a white dot briefly displayed somewhere on the bowl. Each display spot was retested until a stable visual threshold was reached that established how bright the test spot had to be before the patient consistently detected it. On the result sheet, each data point represents a visual threshold in the field of vision for that testing session. Your gaze will naturally go to the grayscale plot, which shows the areas of worst sight in deepest black. By looking at those areas, you can get a quick impression of the pattern of visual field defects. At this point, I usually cast a glance at the mean deviation, which is an average score of the patient's performance. The higher the minus number, the worse the performance. But are the results reliable? In other words, was the patient paying attention and following the rules? To answer that question, you must look at the reliability indices. They measure how well the patient cooperated with the rules of the test. Look at fixation losses. They measure how often the patient signaled awareness of the stimulus when it was projected into the physiologic blind spot where it should not have been seen if the patient kept his or her gaze constantly on the fixation spot. Fixation losses should not exceed 20%. Now look at false positive errors. These responses measure how often the patient signaled awareness of the stimulus when it was not shown. In other words, the patient jumped the gun or was trigger happy. False positive errors should not exceed 30%. Finally, check out false negative errors. They measure how often the patient failed to signal awareness of the stimulus when it was shown above a previously established luminance threshold. This is also a measure of consistency in responses, but when the visual field is full of defects, expect this percentage to be high because the patient's task is difficult. Even so, false negative errors should not exceed 40%. Here's the problem with the reliability indices. They are not that reliable. They tell you how consistent the patient was, but they do not tell you if the patient deliberately performed poorly. The patient may have been a good test taker, but he or she could also have done a good job of fooling the instrument. Any pattern of visual field defects can be faked. On the other hand, if the reliability indices are good and you trust the patient, assume the defects are organic. The next step is to find out how severe these defects are. For that, you must look at the raw data, the visual detection thresholds at each test point. These numbers, expressed in decibels, represent how attenuated or dim the test spot could be and still be detected by the patient. The higher the number, the dimmer the test spot, and the better the vision at that test point. If you are wondering just how abnormal those thresholds are, look at a plot of the raw data compared to how an age-matched patient with a normal visual field would have scored at each test point. Here the numbers represent deviations from normal. Plus numbers tell of better than normal performance. Minus numbers tell of worse than normal performance. The higher the number, the greater the deviation from normal. Here is yet another way to get a feeling for those numbers. The total deviation plot allows you to learn what chance there was that the patient would have achieved those test point scores if he or she had a normal field. The darker the squares, the lower the probability that those test points are normal. 
For example, completely black squares mean that the chances are less than 0.5% that the visual field is normal at those test points. Abnormally high thresholds can come from many causes, including patient inattention, technical errors, uncorrected refractive errors, corneal or lens imperfections, small pupils, an opaque vitreous, or neural visual pathway lesions. If the total deviation plot is abnormal, you should look at the pattern deviation plot to decide if the defect pattern is generalized, more or less equal across the entire test region, or if it is focal, that is, some regions were less well seen than others. Diffuse patterns of visual field loss are usually caused by an uncorrected refractive error or a media opacity. Focal patterns, on the other hand, are usually caused by retinopathy or other visual pathway disturbances. How does the pattern deviation plot accentuate focal defects? By shaving off a layer of diffuse defects and highlighting the especially poor regions of sight which represent the focal defects. To use visual fields to localize disease within the visual pathway, we will analyze the pattern of focal defects in both eyes. Can you figure out how these visual field defects direct you to the location of the responsible lesion? To find out how to do that, turn to the next video called Visual Fields Part 3, Localizing the Lesion.